know, it's it's an unfair question and it's also pure sure, speculation. Sure, sure. But if Hitchens sure. did, hard not to though. You know, win his fight against cancer, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, what do you suspect he would have made of the issues of the day? Now I have a list. I'll say them quickly and then uh, I'll just leave it with you. Sure, sure. Fake sure, news, we'll Trump, Brexit, Ukraine, wokeness, political extremes. Oh wow. Okay. Um, well. I guess we'll start with the easy ones, uh, which, to my mind, the easiest ones on that list are um, are Brexit and Trump, uh, because, uh, and part of what makes it easy is that uh, is the the sort of some of the reasons that I think he would have been very, you know, anti-Trump and continued to be very anti-Brexit. I mean, he was he was opposed to the idea. Uh, you know, when it, when people were arguing about it, you know, many years before it happened. Mm. Uh, and he identified as a European citizen. Right. Yep. So I think a lot of the reasons that he took about those positions, not all of them, but a lot of them, I think, represented things that were common threads uh, between the different versions of Hitchens over the years. And so I have a very hard time imagining any version of Hitchens, which they didn't continue to be common threads. So um, I think that... You know, I think the range of political positions I could imagine um, Christopher Hitchens taking, I mean, there really is a range, right? Because I think that there are things that are sort of consistent with impulses that he had at one time or another that might have led him in different directions. Um, You know, like, I don't, I have a very hard time imagining him ever, you know, saying, oh, never mind, I was wrong about all that stuff in the early 2000s, uh, just as a matter of personality, if nothing else. Uh, you know, like that, that's, and just the fact that it was such a sharp break, you know, with so many of his former comrades that, like, I, I think just psychologically that would have been really hard. Uh, but uh, but I, I can't imagine versions of Hitchens who might have, in some complicated way, it would be despite stuff like that, you know, uh, have warmed back up to, um, uh, have, might have warmed back up to the left to some extent. I think that it's. I think that it's possible. I speculate a little bit in the book. Um, you know, like if you think, I think in the British case it's a lot harder because, uh, you know, I, for better or for worse, uh, you know, I, 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 I think he would have really hated Jeremy Corbyn. But I think that in the, uh, uh, but I think in the American case, I think it, it is a little bit easier to imagine him maybe like, I don't think it's totally out of the question that he could have, you know, he could have like ended up as like a Bernie Sanders supporter in 2016, for example. I think that, you know, I think there are some reasons that I get into in the book why he might've done that, but that's like, so that's like one end of the range. Another end of the range is like, you know, just becoming in many ways, what we would think of as like a resistance lib, you know, in the uh, in the Trump in the Trump years, you know that the I think that there there are many things about Hitchens that might have been consistent with, you know, that the and and then like you, one of your questions was about Ukraine, right? I mean, it's it's it does not stretch the imagination to imagine like Hitchens on TV like ranting about Vladimir Putin, and mm-hmm. you know, and and uh, you know, uh, in a way that's very consistent with uh, you know with the sort of tenor of 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 some of his his Bush era politics. Um, and so, and maybe even kind of on the, you know, Lincoln Project kind of end of the sort of like, you know, like Republican neocon never Trumper types, you know, that like, you know, having some affinity to that crowd, I mean, some of those people are, were his friends, right? So I mean, like, I, I could imagine that too, right? So I think there's like a range of political positions that I could imagine him taking. But I think one thing I absolutely can't imagine is him being friendly to Trump or Brexit for a lot of reasons. You know, I think that the, um, so yeah, I mean, you were kind of alluded to it in the, uh, in the Brexit case, uh, in 1999, the, uh, the first, you know, debate that he did with, uh, with Peter was essentially about that, you know, that the, uh, about whether it was, it was a good thing, you know, I mean, Peter is such a, you know, delightfully strange crank that I think he said he didn't actually vote in the Brexit referendum because he didn't like the, uh, uh, the people who were running the, you know, the leave campaign. Uh, but like, you know, Peter was certainly advocating the position the UK being part of the EU was a bad thing. And, he, you know, Christopher certainly disagreed with him. Uh, and, but I think it's, I think more generally that like the sort of specifics of that or the specifics of what he said about Trump, which, you know, he says um, in 2000, this is sort of 
you know, lost to history. Uh, it's it's strange to remember that this happened, but when Trump was sort of a uh, semi-candidate, at least very publicly floating his candidacy for the uh, Reform Party nomination for president, uh, which ultimately ended up going to Pat Buchanan. Uh, but um, in his column for The Nation, where he talks about that, uh, Hitchens refers to Trump as a nutball narcissistic tycoon. Uh, and um, he, he says elsewhere uh, that the, as far as he can tell, the only impressive thing about that man is that he found a way to cover uh, 90% of his skull with 10% of his hair. I might be getting the percentages wrong, but it was along those lines. Uh, and, uh, and so he certainly like... In that same clip where he talks about covering his hair, he says, uh, you know, like, uh, really the only good thing about him is that he convinced that Slovenian uh, to be on his arm or something like that. <laughs> yeah, which is... Uh... Which is funny, by the way, because because uh, speaking of Slovenians, he uh, uh, he did teach at the New School at the same time as uh, Slavoj Žižek did, uh, and um, oh, and wow. I talked to I talked to somebody who took classes from both of them, and uh, actually tried to arrange a debate between the two of them about Iraq, which apparently both of them were up for, but then the schedules never quite worked out, and then Hitchens got sick and whatever, which mm. uh, but that is some uh, lost YouTube gold right there, but uh, <laughs> without a doubt, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, so he has uh, so so he certainly disliked Trump as a person, but I think there are deeper reasons than that that he would have virulently disliked, uh, you know, Trump and and uh, and also Brexit. You know that like I think I think okay, sort of somewhat staying with personality, but moving into politics. I think just like how aggressively and proudly just stupid like Trump's persona was. <laughs> uh would have uh w- you know would have been something he did not like and but also i think the political forces that trump was appealing to i mean he um uh, hitchens after 9 11 when he was already like advocating the invasion of afghanistan uh did a public debate on uh, reparations and also wrote an essay about it where he supported reparations for the descendants of slaves he uh uh there's a column in uh oh, what was it? i think 2009 uh, when Obama had just come into office and uh, Glenn Beck organized this rally at the Capitol uh, and uh, that uh, Hitchens refers to that rally as the water world of white self-pity. Uh, like it's, you know, I, 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 I think he wouldn't have been able to stand these guys. I, I think that that kind of the, I think the anti-immigrant rhetoric, I think, um, you know, kind of appeals to nativism. Um, you know, I mean, he, he says many times in many places that, you know, that like the, as far as he's concerned, like the two worst things are, you know, racism and religion. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think he wouldn't have been able to stand all that. I think, a, you know, so I think he would have had like very good and honorable reasons for disliking all of that. But also I think that if he, if he'd had, you know, if his, you know, if his like interventionist foreign policy views had stayed in place, you know, which which obviously I'm not crazy about, but I think that too would have led him to um, to have uh, to 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 dislike Trump because even though I would argue there's a big disconnect between Trump's actual record on the stuff and his rhetoric, uh, you know, I mean, if like Trump was was at least sort of rhetorically appealing to kind of right wing isolationism of the kind that Hitchens particularly hated. And and like to use as a foil for what he thought, uh, and you know, I mean, he even like you know, I mean, Trump even like resuscitated the old Lindbergh slogan, you know, America first. So uh, so yeah, I I think that I think I think on every level, um, I mean, I think there's an interesting question about whether he could have like you know brought himself to hold his nose and vote for Hillary Clinton, but the uh, but like I I there's not a doubt in my mind that you know that that he would have uh, he would have despised Trump and that he you know and that he would have thought that. You know, I mean, he he did think that the EU was like a sort of civilizing liberal influence, you know, on on the UK, and uh, and and I think the idea that, um, and I I think the idea that it would withdraw from it in this campaign for you know like this very right wing campaign that's like very mixed up with you know with um, um, uh, you know sentiment about uh about you know immigration and you know and and uh eastern european workers and all of that you know I, I i think he i think he would have hated everything about it uh, i know there's also some stuff about wokeness on on your list um i guess i guess i give a variation of the same answer i think that there are all right i think that i don't think that there's any version of hitchens that you could easily imagine who would have been 
you know, describable as as woke, right? It, it is is his affect. I think he I think he would be, uh, you know, I I. I you know, I think he kind of did hate the vegans of all of that. You know, as as he was perceiving them in the late two thousands, mm-hmm. and I'm sure he would have continued to do so. I I think that like he has, going back to the nineties, uh, there's an interview with the progressive that is in that collection I mentioned earlier, the last interview and other interviews where I think he says some very, you know, from my perspective, very good left wing Adolf Reedish things. You know, criticizing identity politics, uh, and and I think he. Um, you know, and, and then I think he also just like, you know, just on a level of just kind of personality and cultural sensibilities and, and all that stuff. I mean, the idea of a version of, of Hitchens who's like, you know, very, very concerned with parsing people's statements to see if they said anything problematic, you know, I mean, like, like, yeah, he obviously would have hated all of that and, and, and he would have, you know, he would have probably been canceled numerous times, at least some of them unfairly, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and he was. You know, I mean, we talked a little bit about, you know, his his issues with the word contrarian, but like, you know, I mean, look, I don't. Yeah, he did write an article called Why Women Aren't Funny and um, and followed it up with a video, (laughs) followed it up with a video. That's right. You know, and at no point did he do the wow, I didn't write that headline. Right. Like, you know, he no, he he meant it sincerely. Yeah. He loved whether that. he did or not. He he, he was he was going to yeah die yeah whether he did or not he was very insane. happy about you know yeah. like 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 he I he he showed every side of enjoying the controversy right so yeah. Uh, yeah. you know like the uh, I mean actually I think the the content of the article is is um, uh, is actually not even super incendiary but uh, but but he also enjoyed the fact that it went out under that headline and then it pissed people off in the way that he did. It did right. Yeah. So, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, he certainly would have, you know, and, and I mean, he was, uh, I mean, you know, he also had, uh, you know, he, he was also on record as, as, as disliking the absolute taboo about saying the N word, even while quoting people, and, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, uh, there's several yeah. recordings of him saying it by the current standards of cancellation. He, he would have been canceled. Yeah, no, no doubt about it, right? So I think the more interesting question is what he would have thought about kind of the other end of the that version of the culture war, you know, and... and uh, What's the other know? end? What do you mean? Oh, okay. So, um, so in other words, like, okay, so yes, he would not have been particularly woke. He would have been super canceled. I think all of that stuff is pretty safe. I think sure. that the... Uh, I think that... Uh, I think the more interesting question is maybe what he would have thought about certain kinds of like anti wokeness uh, as they existed, you know, in, in the last several years in the U.S. Right? So, um, and you know, elsewhere, but you know, we kind of tend to be the epicenter of you know the whole <laughs> thing, you know. So, uh, so no one doesn't like the Americans. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I'm thinking both of like, you know, what was for a while called the intellectual dark web, which was uh, consisted of people like Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro, but also of Hitchens, old friend, Sam Harris. Um, and, and Hitchens undoubtedly would have been roped in there. Had he still been around, I think, because him and Harris yeah. would have stayed very cozy. I think had the same uh, topics to be speaking about and so forth. Yeah. I, I think that it is, you know, right. I think that it is entirely plausible that he would have stayed pretty cozy with Harris. I think that the, I think that there are some specific views that Harris took that um, I, I think it'd be fascinating to see how Hitchens would have reacted to, you know, mm. if, if he'd, if he'd remained alive. Right. I think that the sort of like one of the big ones is uh, Harris's defense of, uh, of Charles Murray and, uh, and, and, and some of the commentary at IQ and all that stuff, because, Hitchens was at the you know at the very least strongly on record as as disagreeing with all of that you know at the mm-hmm. at the time yeah right? true I mean, that would have been I've never I've been thought about it's so funny how that was everything for a while and you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 no it's right it's all yeah, goes into the memory hole yeah. but yeah uh so so yeah I don't know uh so so I do I do think that like some of the things that might have moved Harris in that direction could easily have moved Hitchens also on the other hand like you you get into some questions here though like what what would he have thought of some of the company that that would have put him in right i mean like you know what like i i think um you know i mean 
I'd love to see Hitchens on Peterson. I think yeah, that exactly. Right. You know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I think it's not hard to imagine him, yeah. uh, him, him strongly disliking Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I would actually love to read that regardless of what he thought that they have a, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not hard to imagine him hating Jordan Peterson. And then, uh, and then when you think about some of the stuff that's kind of happened in the last couple of years in terms of anti-woke backlash, I mean, one example that I have got a record about, I have an article about this in the, uh, the Daily Beast, uh, which, uh, um, you know, is, is kind of funny timing, right? Because I just had this book come out and in the last, uh, I, I had this line at the end of the book where, where I'm sort of saying that, like, you know, love, uh, you know, whatever you think about Hitchens, uh, it's, um, you got to miss the fact that he was, like, all over the media as much as he was and, and that he was, like, as as interested and eloquent as he was and uh and and i sort of contrast that to like a lot of um you know similar media that you know a lot of uh the way that the media is right now and Mm. uh yeah what we started with yeah yeah exactly right and Mm. uh and so and in the course of of doing that uh i i mentioned a few publications by name and uh and 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 one of those has since invited me to to start writing for them so uh that's a you know so uh they haven't gotten around to it yet (laughs) yeah they haven't gotten around to reading the book yet i guess uh but uh but yeah actually i think the first article i wrote for uh, for the daily beast was about um uh which to be fair uh is, is is under different management you know than it was then but uh is uh the editorial page anyway so um so yeah, it's one of the first article I wrote for the Daily Beast uh, was about what Christopher Hitchens would have thought about the anti-critical race theory laws, uh, and and I make the case in there that uh, he would have hated all of that, you know, because uh, for a couple of reasons, right? Some of which we've already gotten into, but uh, but you know, I I think one uh, that he was, um, you know, I mean his sort of views. You know, I, I think he was very strongly opposed to to uh, to kind of ignoring the the bad racial history of the United States. You know, I think he I think he was pretty eloquent on that topic. Again, you know, he supported reparations. Uh, and two, you know, I think uh, you know he was very passionate. You know, about uh, about free speech, and he had. Uh, and if you watch in particular, I'm thinking of this uh, this debate that he did. At some university in Canada, I do not remember which one, uh, in like two thousand and six or seven, uh, where you know you can find if you just type into the YouTube search bar Christopher Hitchens free speech, this will be one of the first things that will come up, and it's one of my all time favorite Hitchens opening statements. You know he he's you know he starts out by fire, fire. There you go. I've said it. The uh, you know, not in a crowded theater, I'll grant you, and then he makes the show of like looking around the room at this university where he has as says, apparently I've said it in the dining hall at all Hogwarts. But <laughs> uh, and then it goes into the origins of the cliche about shouting fire in a crowded theater and how mm. that was actually um how that was actually something that was um you know, Oliver Wendell, you know, the greatly overpraised Oliver Wendell Holmes, uh, you know, when he when he said that about fire in a crowded theater was actually upholding the conviction of a uh, group of Jewish socialists who had been arrested for passing out uh, Yiddish language, anti-war and anti-conscription literature during World War One. Uh, and um, and his, you know, his, his, his point essentially is that you you really shouldn't trust uh uh, any sort of authority structure to tell you what counts as a real fire and what doesn't. Uh, and, um, and so I, I think when it comes to this sort of attempts to crack down, you know, whether it's framed in terms of critical race theory or gender ideology or whatever they, but to crack down on uh, basically the discussion of controversial ideas in classrooms, right. You know, I, I think he would have hated that, you know? So, mm. uh, so, so I do think that he would have been, I think there are at least certain kinds of manifestations of anti woke backlash that he would have had a big problem with. But um, but that said, um, would he have? Uh, uh, you know, that said, I don't think that anybody who was very woke would have liked him. Uh, and I, I think he probably would have. I think he probably would have reveled in that fact, which would be consistent with you know with what he. Uh, uh, you know, which, which would have been consistent with how he acted in his lifetime. Mm. Uh, and I guess finally, I think the only one I, I think that I didn't hit was Ukraine. So I guess just very briefly on Ukraine. Um, 
I think the most likely Hitchens take would have been sort of waxing eloquent about the evils of Vladimir Putin and, and being all in favor of everything, you know, that mm-hmm. the U.S. and the U.K. were doing uh, to uh, uh, to aid Ukraine and, you know, God knows. I mean, maybe you U.S. Know, intervention. Maybe, Maybe even U.S. intervention, right? I mean, like it's it's not out of it's not entirely out of the question that like you know, it's like that doesn't you know that doesn't break the imagination to like imagine him saying something mm. like that, right? Uh, on the other hand, uh, the is it possible that you know even if he was never willing to quite say he was wrong about Iraq, that you know his hands having been a little bit burned about how badly that went, that like it did put him in a different place about some of this stuff and that he could have said something else it's possible i'm probably stretching but the one thing that's making me think this is that i'm just remembering um the some of what he's written about the uh the cuban missile crisis uh which um which which i have to say has very much been on my mind uh since all of this started uh and uh and he's got this very very funny line about how um uh, like everybody else in my generation, I can remember where I was and what I was doing on the day when uh, President John F. Kennedy nearly killed me. <laughs> so, the, the, yeah, who knows? The final one was uh, political extremes. Uh, you don't have to comment on it if you don't think it's worth saying, but it's quite clear that a smaller and well, at least from my perspective, smaller and smaller minority on both the left and right are dominating all political discussion. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I think there's, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a, I think there's a sense in which that's true. I mean, I think that there's, I think it depends a little bit what you mean, because, um, like, I don't think, um, I mean, you know, look, who's, who's running, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, who's running the Democratic Party in the U.S., the Labor Party in the U.K., right? I mean, not, not exactly, uh anybody you could mistake for, for being representatives of the radical left in both cases at this point. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I think on certain kinds of like policy things, I would maybe push a little bit back on that, but I, I think that's consistent with knowing what you mean, right? That in other words, like, I think some of this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about, about media fragmentation, right? I mean, that there, there is, I think, um, a lot of incentive to, to use certain kinds of apocalyptic rhetoric in the culture war. And um, yeah, what Hitchens would have made of all of that is tricky because um, on the one hand, you know, he's, uh, I, you know, I, I tend to, you know, I think in the last years, you know, he, he enjoyed feeling unclassifiable uh and um and you know and and i think it's entirely possible he would have continued to have a weird mixture of positions and um uh and that you know that feels very plausible so on the other on the other hand i mean to the extent that you think that martin davis is right that you know that that he he sort of drew his energy from from being you know from being like passionately attached to big causes i mean i think Mm. some of this depends on what it is that you think might be going on there that you sure, know might yeah. have, might have given him that charge, you know. So it's a little mm-hmm. bit hard to tell. Mm. 